It's Ford versus Subaru in a Test Hill Battle Royale. Which is the better all-wheel drive system? It's an epic compact crossover competition on this episode of Driving Sports TV. Today at the Test Hill, we have a pair of compact crossovers that are more alike than different. They have similar wheel bases. Both have advanced off-road capabilities, and both have the word sport on their trunk lids. This is the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport in top end first edition trim. Not to be confused with the larger Bronco, the Sport is small, but it still packs in big features. The model we're testing includes the off-road ready Badlands package, this includes Falcon Wild Peak AT3W all-terrain tires, a stout 2-liter EcoBoost engine good for 250 peak horsepower, and an advanced twin-clutch rear drive unit with differential lock. As you see it here, you're looking at $40,090 US dollars, including destination. The competition today is a 2021 Subaru Crosstrek Sport. This comes with the largest engine option you can get in a Subaru Crosstrek, it's a 2.5-liter naturally aspirated Boxer 4 that puts out up to 182 horsepower. The Sport has Subaru symmetrical all-wheel drive with enhanced dual-function X mode. Because this is one of my personal cars, we are able to upgrade the tires to better match the Ford. Unfortunately, you cannot buy Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws in the stock Crosstrek size. Instead, we went with the more pedestrian Falcon Wild Peak Trail tires. These have similar compounds, but a less aggressive tread pattern. Throwing in an extra $1,000 for the tire upgrade, the Crosstrek as you see it here is $29,655, including destination. Even including the tires, it's still $11,000 less than the Ford. Today we're going to run the gauntlet, putting each of these capable crossovers through every course on our test hill. So this first test is what we call garter way. This is a very simple incline with side to side power transfer getting us up. And this vehicle equipped with Wild Peak AT3Ws should make it pretty easily. Let's talk about vehicle setup here, shall we? Because we're not just gonna jump right into this. Let's start with goat mode completely off. I have nothing enabled and we'll see what the difference is. And away we go. This is extremely loose dirt. I don't think Ryan intended it to be that way when he built this, but in a second, you'll see what's gonna start happening. The rear differential, which has torque vectoring, should push power left and right to help propel me up the hill. Oh, it's a really soft hill. Can we see power moving around outside? Maybe, okay, I think we're gonna have to lock I'm gonna lock the uh, rear differential. It okay. hasn't been locked yet. Let's see if there's a difference. And I'm just keeping the throttle down. Is it gonna pull us up? I think I'm gonna actually have to turn on the goat mode. Okay. So I'm gonna switch over to rock crawl. All right. No, wait, let's not do rock crawl. Let's do sand, because this stuff's really soft. That's better. Yeah, so I'm gonna back up. Now, typically sand modes with these uh, what they do is actually allow for a lot of wheel spin because you need to move your way through the sand. So let's try this again. All right. So we got take two here. Do you need to give it a little more? No. I think I made the car, the, I think I made the course too hard. Yeah. <laughs> this is supposed to be the easy course. <laughs> like I was holes. saying, I don't think Ryan intended this track to be this hard but there's just so much loose dirt it's really ah, once you get over the rise it makes it up but boy that was a struggle and that was with the AT3Ws which are the most extreme tire oof so the Subaru well let's jump into the Subaru and we'll discuss it so before we even get started it's you got to really understand these are different tires they're both wild peaks the Bronco has the more aggressive AT3W. This one has the trails, which are more your everyday tire, but they are still all terrains. They're just not as aggressive. 
The Bronco Sport did chew up the course a little bit. We've tried to fill in some of the holes, so we'll see how this does. I was just gonna drive up, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna keep it in snow dirt mode with X mode. So that's X mode type one. What that does is it gives a more aggressive mapping in how it does brake vectoring to shift power around the system. So as I go and as wheels slip, it'll put a brake on one wheel, which then redistributes power to the other wheels. However, when there's no grip, oh, oh I did just keep the throttle in. Okay, I'm just digging holes. Can I get over the rise? Ah, no. Now I have to be careful here. This is really soft, so I can easily dig a hole that's too deep, and then I'm basically going to high center or scrape the nose. So we're just gonna do with a little more speed here. And note, I have not aired down any tires yet. That is not something that we're allowed to do on manufacturer's cars. Um, I, this is my own personal car, so I could do it on this car, but uh, I want it to be fair. And this Subaru does have the exact same, or almost the same ground clearance as the Bronco Sport does. Oh, he's actually not doing too bad. He's digging in in the back. Okay, and he's, nope. Oh. <laughs> I was gonna say he's made it up, but not quite yet. And it made it up. Woo, that was tough. In my mind, when I designed this course, I was thinking uh, that it would compact because of rain or mm -hmm. something like that. It, it doesn't rain here ever. Yeah. So it's basically just like silt. Uh, because of that, yeah, I'm gonna give the win to the Bronco and mm -hmm. it's mostly because of the tires. It does have more advanced off-road kit. Yeah. We're gonna get more into that on the next course because now we're gonna take them to the Rattler. Now the point of this one is it's a lot of rocks and they're big rocks, four by four, four by eights, you know, kind of, they're, they're all pretty large and we position them in a way that we're really gonna test approach, breakover, departure, and articulation. I'm gonna go ahead and set this into rock crawl mode because it has such a mode, let's use it. And rock crawl will automatically lock the four wheel drive system, which uses a clutch pack, uh, and it will also lock that rear differential. This should make it as easy as possible to go over this. And I'm really actually, the crawl ratio on this is quite nice. I am barely moving along. Now it's not a Wrangler, but it's not supposed have to Have him straighten out. Okay, continue straight. Oh, you're good. Right there, right there. Oh, okay, we've got over. How are we looking, Carlina? Yeah, you're fine. You have you about- One inch or more. More than that. You got about six inches of clearance. So far he has no wheels off. And I'm feeling pretty confident in this. I mean, the suspension is really soaking up these rocks nicely. I'm feeling like the system is fairly confident. You do get wheel spin because that is the nature of these systems and these crossovers. It's not like, you know, in the big Bronco, you have a transfer case and that will like physically lock the front and the back. This isn't the same thing. It uses a clutch pack and it uses lots of logic. <laughs> Doing good. I think that one uh, worked pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, it was easy, it was smooth. How'd the line look? It was good. I, you didn't kick up any rocks. You also didn't um, have any wheels that popped up from what I How noticed. was the wheel spinning? Was there a lot of wheel spin there or just a little bit? Only a little bit on your driver's side. Great. So the brake vectoring did a good job of reducing yeah. wheel spin because you don't want too much on rocks. Um, now the Subaru does not have a rock crawl mode. It has X mode, but it doesn't have X mode rock crawl. Not a thing. Yeah. So. It'll be interesting to see how mm -hmm. that deals with this tricky situation. Definitely. All right, I think you got it from here. Yeah. <laughs> so the Bronco did a really good job of having a fairly decent crawl speed for not having a low range. It also did a really good job of keeping the wheels from spinning aggressively. When you start getting aggressive wheel spin, that's when you can get into trouble on rocks. Now Subaru relies on wheel spin before it clamps down and uses brake vectoring to shift power around. So. I have my concerns. There is significant difference here. And this car is capable of so many things, but I don't know if this is gonna be too much. For those of you who don't watch the show all the time, yes, I do own this car. It's also the car that my wife drives every day. So if I break it, I'm busted.
I am going to go ahead and prep the car by putting it in snow dirt mode. I don't want deep snow because that'll give more wheel spin. I actually want less wheel spin. I kind of wish there was a rock crawl mode here so that it would really prevent the wheels from spinning because if we move a rock, it is possible that we could uh, break something. So the approach here, now there's no underbody protection on this car. All right, so the Subaru, I'm actually gonna hop down a little sooner because the Subaru has a front lip that hangs a little lower than the Bronco Sport. So you gotta be extra careful. I'm gonna help him line up, straighten out his line a bit, perfect. Okay, and gonna see, oh, we got some rear, oh, massive tire spin. I'm gonna move back just to make sure I'm safe. I'm gonna have to uh, use a little more momentum. So with the Subaru, unfortunately, it doesn't have a rock crawl mode. So he's struggling here a little bit, just digging in. I don't see any tire lift currently, but he's just digging himself a hole. Okay, he's now chosen a different line. Yep, this one's a little bit easier for him. Oh, he's got lift on that passenger side now and he's just spinning, digging in. Okay, let's go into X mode type two and see if that improves the situation at all. Ooh, ooh, got over it. Now the next one. That wheel spin, the fact that this is based on wheel spin makes it really bad for rocks. I am not terribly comfortable doing this. Uh, even with the Falcon Wild Peak trails, which are a little more rugged than a standard OE street tire, they are not like extreme because you can get different levels of extreme on these things. Ooh. Well, we made it through, but I have to say the Bronco Sport did it much better. That was, that was a little nerve wracking. Well, the Bronco really just breezed through the track. The Subaru, not so much. I yeah, think. I can take a look at this and I am just, <laughs> this is a mess compared to what we built. Yeah, yeah. The Subaru just kicked things all over the place. And I do <laughs> believe I have built this course to be too difficult for crossovers. This is, this is gonna damage some cars and I'm not comfortable with that. So yeah. this course is gonna have to get redone, I think, before we start bringing more crossovers out here. We do have another test to do here though. We have the Sidewinder. Now the Sidewinder has one section that foils everything but the most competent off-road machines. Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna do that. We have a bypass because we're gonna skip that. This is a course that includes crosscut followed by some logs, which is then followed by a steep climb. Put it into rock crawl because we don't want too much wheel spin. Too much wheel spin can actually kick up a log and that's a problem. Putting it into rock mode automatically locks the center clutch and also locks the rear differential. So away we go. Now the first thing is a cross cut, which is gonna remove traction uh, because one wheel is gonna dip in and the other one is not. I'm also gonna turn on the front camera here, which I love that this vehicle has, and that'll help me with my line How you doing? Doing well, how about yourself? <laughs> doing good. <laughs> good, yeah. Okay, now this last log here, usually this is problematic. Again, a little wheel spin here. You can see power shuffle around, but then it gets it gets grip. It just does such a good job. This, this Bronco Sport, I don't think people realize just what a good little off-roader this vehicle is. Ford just did an amazing job with this thing. And yeah, you're gonna spend the money on it. To get all the goodies, this thing is 40 grand. Now you don't have to spend that much, of course, to get a capable Bronco Sport, but you're gonna pay still pretty close to that. I mean, keep in mind that Subaru is way cheaper, but it is the best version of both vehicles uh, in this class that both these manufacturers make. So it is fair to a degree. Okay, oh, and up we go. So the very first test was very much about tires. 
However, the next two tests really weren't. It was more about how power is distributed around the system. And the Bronco Sport here is just simply superior to the Subaru setup. Now, if you do get a more entry-level Bronco Sport with the uh, all-wheel drive system, you will get a system that is not quite as capable as this one. It's gonna be closer to the Subaru. Uh, but we don't have one of those available, so I don't know how good or bad it is. But we will get one when we can. Uh, it might be a few months. Okay, now it's time for the Subaru Crosstrek Sport to do the same. Now it's funny that both these vehicles have basically the same ground clearance. I mean, 8.8 .8 in the Bronco Sport when equipped with the Falcon Wild Peaks. This one has 8.7. I mean, that's pretty negligible. And you might look at both and say, well, the Bronco Sport looks like it has more ground clearance, but the fact is it has more bits dangling down. Oh. Let's put it into uh, X mode, and I'll do it X mode snow dirt. I forgot, X mode always shuts off when you're not using it, or you drive over a certain speed limit. Okay, so he's slowly going over that side cut. Can't see in the back, but maybe there's some wheel lift. More spinning happening. <laughs> Okay, so he's taking it nice and easy over those logs. Once again, he doesn't want to kick anything up. Okay, and through. Oh, is, are we over it yet? Come on, come on, come on. Oh. Once again, this dirt is just so loose. The Subaru system definitely struggled. However, it did get through all of the courses today. And I think that's pretty incredible considering the price. I mean, this is 28 grand and change. Uh, and then the tires uh, were an additional $1,000. So you're looking at, you know, $29,000 versus 40 grand for the Bronco Sport. That is a huge price difference. But I think at the end of the day, the Subaru did okay. Uh, but it definitely shows areas where Subaru can improve. Like right here, like so much struggling on an incline. I mean, why is it struggling so hard? It should be more aggressive in that off-road brake vectoring. Ah, uh, come on, you gonna get through? Wow, I didn't know this was gonna be that hard right here. This is the exit of the other course. Did X mode shut off? Oh, X mode shut off. Let's put X mode back on. Because we spin the, spun the wheels too fast. Here we go. Come on. We're going to get out of it. We're going to get out of it all by ourselves because we're a big boy. Come on, Crosstrek Sport. You got this. Oh, wow. That was... That was an interesting cherry on top, wasn't it? Okay, what well, we got out of it, again, we're able to get out of these situations, maybe not as elegantly as I would like. That's a little disappointment. I do like these Falcon Wild Peak Trails. They're pretty decent tires for mixed surface use. Um, didn't really perform as well as I would like in some of the super soft stuff, but that's kind of to be expected. Also, you can really see the huge difference in brake vectoring versus torque vectoring in the fact that the Bronco just was really able to put that power down without making such a big show about it. So is the extra capability of the Bronco Sport worth it to you? Uh, do you wanna, would you rather, I mean, 40 grand on the Bronco Sport, you could buy a 4Runner for that, which is bigger and more capable. But if you want something small, the Bronco Sport is still a pretty good choice. Like we mentioned before, it's a really a hard course because yeah. there's such like loose dirt. And it's a new course too. So and it yes. hasn't settled yet. It yeah. hasn't compressed. Yeah. We have had zero rain out here. We were hoping for rain today, actually. I don't think it's rained out here for six months. So elements are still loose uh -huh. and the loose is, is a challenge. Yeah. The first course, clearly the Bronco did better yep. because of the tires. The second course, 
the Rattler, we should have done it last, I think, because mm -hmm. the changes that we made to the course, we're really testing the articulation now. I think it was a bit much for both vehicles, actually. Yeah. The Bronco did good. It did better than the Crosstrek. It's a clear winner on that course, and it comes down to better crawl ratio, better ability to put power down without needing wheel spinning, mm -hmm. uh, which is required for brake vectoring, like in the Subaru yeah. Crosstrex Sports Symmetrical All-Wheel Drive. The Subaru, it yeah. couldn't really find that traction it needed, so it just right. dug holes. Which is kind of how the system <sighs> yeah. is designed, yeah, but, but you can see that there's a limitation to the design. Yeah. This is not a good use for that design, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah. On the Sidewinder, both vehicles got up it, and that's what we have to appreciate yeah. here. Both vehicles got up it without having to charge forth and really like just use momentum mm -hmm. to get through it. Because you can use momentum, but momentum doesn't tell us anything about the all-wheel drive yeah. systems. That just tells us that you have a decent of enough of an approach and a breakover. Um, and I think, you know, the Crosstrek did it, and we have to give them points for that. Keeping in mind, 28,000 plus a thousand dollars in tires, so twenty-nine thousand dollars, versus forty grand for the Bronco Sport. Forty grand yeah. for that little thing. With the Bronco Sport, I think you get maybe more for your money here if you really want to be able to do it all. The Subaru, it's great for you know just a little bit off-road and going here and there and right. daily driver, but the price for that is just so much more reasonable. Right, the Subaru all day every oh, day. Yeah. But if you actually need to do the real hard stuff yes. and you don't want to buy a 4Runner, you don't want to buy a big Bronco, yeah. that's a good option. Yeah, it is. Great. Mm -hmm. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. I'm Carlina Gore. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon, right here, maybe. I don't know, we're maybe there. Maybe over, there. maybe over there. Maybe over there. Yeah. See ya. <laughs>